Okay. Uh, welcome back to this week's edition of the Rock and Roll Ghost Podcast. Uh, this week we have uh, actor Jose Maria Yazpik um, from Narco Mexic Mexico. Uh, the third final season is debuting in November, correct? Yes, the uh, November 5th. November 5th, it's coming out. Okay. Uh, in, in the series, uh, which is your, you know, this is your, a role you've played many times now, uh, you portray Amado Carrillo Fuentes. Sorry, I am, I am terrible with, uh, sometimes with Spanish names, they don't roll off my tongue as well as they should. No, but it's, it's not your, your pronunciation is, is, is very good. Don't okay. worry about it. Um, and just as a reminder to everyone out there, like, subscribe, share, uh, and I have links for Jose that you follow him, all the social media and all that stuff. So and make sure you watch Narcos and everything else that Jose is in. So welcome to the show, Jose. I appreciate you taking the time today. It's a pleasure, Brett. Thank you. Yeah. Um, first of all, I mean, God, Narcos is all of it. The part with... Um, uh, Escobar and then uh, the Mexico version has just been some of the most thrilling TV uh, I have ever seen. Um, how how did you feel when you first uh, got involved with it? Um, it's uh, it's it's very you know it's it's also always like a bittersweet feeling when uh, when you come from a country that's been pounded by you know, by, by all this drug on wars and uh, the, the war on drugs, I'm sorry. And uh, uh, we've been submerged in it for so many decades now and it's caused so many pain and so much death. Uh, but at the same time, it's really exciting to, to be able to, you know, play this character, this complex character that, that many people um, love in this country and, uh, and that's caused so much pain as well. So, uh, you know, it's that bittersweet um, sensation. Yeah. How, how do you find the balance with playing a guy that is so notorious for so many things? I mean, you know, I mean, he's done hor horrendous things, but, you know, also like in the portrayal of uh, how they portrayed Escobar, I mean, some of these, sometimes these guys aren't all 100% bad. They, no, you do some good things to offset it. I don't know what role religion plays in in that, you know, bargaining with God kind of thing, you know. But uh, <laughs> well, it's you know, like in acting school, they teach us not to, um, how do you say, not to. Ah, se me fue la palabra. No, the thing is, you, you want to play a human being, no? Yeah. Complex human being with with the good and the bad. Um, Amado Carrillo Fuentes, uh, as, as El Chapo and as Escobar and many others, uh, they, I mean, they just didn't one day say, hey, I want to be a bad guy. I, I want to be a drug dealer. Uh, you know, the context in their context uh, in Mexico at that time uh, with the government that wasn't paying attention to them. They, 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 I mean, these guys didn't have you know, uh, uh, education, and they didn't have uh, medical care, they didn't have food, you know. Right. Um, so most of the time, you know, these guys have to do whatever they have to survive. Yeah. Um, you and, 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 you know, it's, it's, you try always to, to look at both sides of, of, of the person, you know. Yeah. Um, I try to to also, you know, uh, feel the, the 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 fears and and the insecurities that they felt, because uh, they're not supermen, you know, they're they're human beings just like us. So um, it's very interesting to you know to to get into their their skin and 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 yeah yeah um, I'm 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 yeah me estoy haciendo bolas I'm. <laughs> It's a, it's a, it's a complex situation. Yeah. Um, does it ever? Does, do you ever feel uncomfortable with anything that? you know, you have to, um, you're required to come up with, I guess. The uh, thing is, you know, when, when they say, oh man, you made me laugh so hard in, in this scene and, and Amado, he seems like a cool guy. Uh, for From all the research that I got and from talking to people that actually knew him, yeah. he was like that. He was a really, really funny guy. 
an extremely intelligent, streetwise uh, person right. um, who really just, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't as violent as Escobar or as the Arellanos. Uh, he was just trying to, you know, to get ahead. Yeah. Um, but I'm not saying that, uh, you know, that's, that's the way to do it. Right. Right. But, um, but uh, yeah, it, it, it feels, it feels kind of weird, especially when people, you know, write, write to me on, on social media and say, come on, man, you, you know, you're all, you know, dressed like all in black with the, uh, you know, with the, with your airplanes and that's, that sends a bad message to, to the kids, right. um, which is a valid argument. It's just, um, I think it's a, it's a lot more complex than that. Well, there's a lot to be said for, I mean, let's be honest, I, 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 gangster portrayal since, you know, Jimmy Cagney, you know, yeah. and, and all that stuff in the, in the early days of talking cinema, um, when it began, um, the, 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 stories about Al Capone or whoever, you know, and, and down to Escobar and, and El Chapo and everything, you know, um, they strike a chord for many different reasons. And a lot of times it's with people that have nothing that see somebody, see somebody grabbing an opportunity for themselves, despite the powers that be trying to keep them down. Exactly. Um, you know, like you said, nobody probably goes out wanting to just kill people as a part of your job. Uh, maybe there are some, um, but as more of a necessity to for it to happen, uh, to in order to. But it's, it's one of those things. It's a spiral. Once exactly. You, you exactly. Have, you have to. You have to commit, or somebody. Or you're else dead. To, yeah. You're you're dead if you if if you don't, and you're dead if you do. Right. Well, right. That's, uh, so, so um, you know, it's it's a, it's a very tough situation. Yeah. Um, you see it all the time here in Mexico. I mean, these the, these kids uh, that live in Sinaloa and Culiacán and all these places that really have no no future. If, if they try to do the things the right way, right? Um, they're they're you know they're they're just they're 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 done. Right. If they're you're done. if you're not from a wealthy family, probably. Exactly. Yeah, you're, you're you've got a real uphill battle to avoid getting into any kind of trouble, whether not trying to or whether just avoiding it or you know whatever. Um, and you don't have to also take into consideration, which a lot of people never do. I come from Chicago, and a lot of people don't understand the uh, the um, uh, idea behind the problems we have on the South Side in particular. It's an economic. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a, a, the loss of fathers and breaking up of families and, and easy money to be had to support your family through drugs. And it's just easier to go about it when there's nothing going on to, you know, who wants to work? Who wants to work now even is uh, yet another thing, you know? Uh, and of course, crime goes up during these periods of time. But, you know, you have to really take in the social aspect of, you know what what's gone on in Mexico for so many got hundreds of years. I mean, you know, between the political corruption, the criminal, you know, uh, cons you know, uh, outlets that are there, and everybody's just trying to get by in some way or another. You know, in the middle, and you know, it just there's no easy answer. It seems ever for it. But you, you suggested, uh, I've seen in other interviews about just that there needs to be more dialogue between between people and, and bringing things to the light, I, I believe, is what you were kind of suggesting. Well, I was suggesting just uh, not making drugs uh, illegal anymore and, and uh, right. you know, make, make them, making them legal. Uh, like you said, it's, it's a, it's a well, I mean, I mean, experts cannot agree on anything. Right. Uh, we're not gonna get <laughs> we're not gonna get get anything done. Right. Uh, it's this collateral uh, relationship between two countries that change strategies depending on on what they need. No, right. Um, um, so, you know, in Mexico, it's yeah, it's, it depends uh, which 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 president 
uh, needs to be on the best side of the U.S. or he really wants to go head head first or against the the, the drug dealers. Uh, right. It's ever changing, uh, and you know there's corruption on both sides. Um, right. We produce. Uh, America, uh, the United States consumes, no? They, right, right. they tell us uh, the weapons so we can kill each other. Um, yeah. You would also have to look at, at the uh, at the jails in the U.S. No, that's a that's huge business. Right. Um, so it's a very complex situation, and um, there's all, all of all like, of it is just mind boggling sometimes to think about. It. And there's there's no easy way because the people in power like like to have chaos so that they remain yes. in power and, and make money. Obviously, somebody's making money allowing drugs to enter our country because um, or else how they how would they get here? <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, you have to. I mean, you, you have to because uh, and still, I mean, drugs, I think that's the only thing that that that, you know, Americans pay in cash. Yeah. that's basically it no yeah we're, we're kind of at that point yeah i mean i i, I wouldn't i don't know if i would trust a, a drug dealer that chose uh venmo or cash <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly so imagine you know imagine if, if suddenly the u.s really said okay enough no more drugs are going to go through and mexico right. you know fights the, the the bad guys and 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 then all of a sudden you have no drugs in the u.s you know there's no money fun. And then you you create a, a a huge huge hole of of, of money real money uh, which becomes a huge problem. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's uh it it it, it it's, it's a tough. It's a. It it's, is. It's it's uh and, and the show tries in every way to to balance all of the ideologies and and all of the thoughts and and feelings and and uh, everything that goes on and it's it's one of the most uh probably stellar things ever done on drugs that and maybe uh traffic by steven soderbergh which mm -hmm. is an excellent film about about the drug war the so-called yeah. drug war you know we didn't have enough problems going on in america in the 80s we decided to fight start fighting a drug war you know? <laughs> it, was like, it was nixon actually Oh, Nixon. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It goes back. Nixon. Nixon, uh, Nixon was escalate. was yeah. Nixon was uh, losing Vietnam, and and he needed to win a war, so he declared the war on drugs, which right, he right. later on said he had, he already won, which was right. a lie, of course. Right, right, right. And then Reagan, uh, all of a sudden, amped you know, it up. Yeah, amped it up. So that's that's what I was talking about when when you know the strategy depends on right. You know, on on, on 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 what the president needs and what the what the country's uh, situation uh, yeah. is. So, um, well, yeah. you think, think even further back. I mean, jo Joseph Kennedy, uh, uh, you know, President Kennedy's father was a was a bootlegger. Yeah, during Prohibition. So, yeah, it goes like, all it goes all the way to the eighteen hundreds. Yeah, uh, I mean, during during the Second World War. Uh, the U.S. government asked the, the Mexican government if they could start, you know, uh, uh, you know, cultivating poppies, uh, uh, amapola, so they could, so they could make uh, heroin, so the U.S. could send it to their military, yeah. you know, because the U.S. was very busy, you know, making guns. Right. So the Mexican government said, "Sure, we'll 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 help you." So they they started, uh, yeah, and when the war ended. Uh, the U.S. said, all right, so you, you can go back to tomatoes. <laughs> and obviously the farmers went, dude, there's no no way I'm going to do that. Yeah, you're um, you, you, You've created a huge market. Right. Uh, in Mexico, it wasn't penalized. It was it was it was seen as a, as a health issue, not as a uh, um, how do you say that? A criminal. Issue. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's 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 been like that for for over 100 years. So um yeah, I don't know what the hell is going to happen, man. Yeah, um, you've you grew, you were born in Mexico City. You spent time in in T Tijuana, uh, yeah. living there. Uh, where do you live now? I live in Mexico City. Okay. And uh, how do you find living living in your uh, homeland? Oh, I, I I love it here. Um, yeah. You know, I move around a lot, but I have I have two small daughters, so. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I also enjoy uh, being at home. Uh, I just spent like six months in um, in Spain doing another uh, uh, another show, 
Uh, but my my the time I lived in Tijuana was was very interesting because um, you know I, I met the Arellanos and uh, uh, I, I I used to carpool with the narco juniors as well. No, we used to cross every day. The border I used to charge them five bucks uh, for gas. Yeah, and um, you know these guys are in the show and and um, <laughs> you know it was it was it was quite interesting. That's why you know I've, I've sort of know about this subject because I, I you know, I, I grew up in the border yeah. and I knew that every car that went across filled with drugs, there was one uh, uh, immigration officer that said, go ahead. Thank you right. for my cut. No. Yeah. Um, which is sometimes, uh, you know, the, we have to acknowledge that there's, you know, it's both sides. It's not just right. Mexico. It's also the. US. Oh, no. Right. Exactly. Yeah, you know, not not like tra I don't think uh, traffic in traffic it was like uh, all, all the bad guys were from Mexico and all the corruption was in Mexico, right. and and the good guys were uh, were in San Diego. No, but that, that's yeah, a, a, a quite simplistic. Well, there were there was uh, there was like a little bit of a harder look at the uh, American um, po political end, but not as not as much as I think they even get get to in. In, uh, in Narcos, where they, they even hinting at it is more than some things, you know, have done, which is, you know, it just, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sad subject, because it's, you're right, if you if you make it legal, it, it takes, it, what power do they have anymore? Not only that, Brett, I'm, imagine if you could tax. Right. El Chapo. Just imagine, right. I mean, there would be no need I mean, I mean, uh, healthcare would be covered, right? Just for just that one guy, right? Um, but you know, the interests go uh, way beyond what we know. So um, it's apparently um, it's it's a uh, it's it's a it's a good business to have, you know, both countries um, just being so volatile and so uh, unstable. Especially yeah, ours, yeah. not 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 so much yours, because uh, the violence that goes in, in uh, you know, that happens in the U.S. due to all this is is, is much um, smaller than than what we're living here. Right. right. Now, is that is that ever a, a reason to worry as somebody that's, um, I guess you know, well known? Um, you know, I, I know that the. I hate to just, you know, act like it happens every second, but I mean, there are kidnappings for ransom that happen by, by gangs and such like that. Is that ever something that you worry about yourself? Uh, of course, of course. I, I, I take my precautions. Yeah. Is it sad that you have to take <laughs> precautions just it's, because it's, you, you know, have a full of success? It's, it's very sad, especially now that, you know, I, I was in Spain, like I like I told you before, and and I took my, my family went with me, and it was just this like like brand new feeling of of, of being able to walk down the street at any hour of of, of night right. or day and and feel safe, and and to know that my kids could go to the you know to the supermarket and come back and nothing would happen. Right. Um, yeah, it's 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 very sad, and unfortunately we we get used to it. Yeah, um, you know, like I said, you know, I. I yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 very sad, and um, many many fellow actors, uh, you know, we're we're thinking about always moving to another to the states or to Europe uh, because of that. Yeah, yeah, that's got to be a hard decision because you know you're from there. I mean, that you want to be where your home home is. Yeah, and my parents are here, and friends, yeah. and tortillas. And well, you can get tortillas anywhere, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. But you know, let, let's be honest, like the best Italian food is in Italy. The best Mexican food is probably in Mexico. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, and, and especially, you know, thinking about uh, the my, my kids future. Yeah, you know, I, don't, I don't want them to, to live in fear. And, you know, as I see things, uh, this is not going to be resolved for, you know, in my lifetime. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's staying also a part of, I mean, while well, you say it's not going to be resolved in your lifetime, but it is perhaps staying also, you know, a thing to uh, determination to try to say, like, 
I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm here, I'm not leaving, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be scared to run away from it. That's another thing, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, we actors, we, we move a lot, you know, for, for the next three years, I'm going to be living, you know, six months in Spain and six months here in, 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 uh, in Mexico. And um, if there, you know, if a, if a film comes up, then I'll, I'll do it uh, anywhere in the world. So, um, but yeah, there's there's one thing that I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna betray my country by leaving. Right. You know? Right. Sometimes uh, when you hear stories or a, a real awful crime comes like very close to 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 you right. being a family member or or somebody that you love, a friend, uh, then you automatically have to reassess the situation yeah, yeah i can imagine that's difficult well let's talk about something a little more positive uh, you you brought up tortillas and we were talking about food <laughs> for a second and this is a subject i like to divert in i i recently had a conversation with an english musician where we uh literally just got sidetracked on english food for a while so um what what is your go-to dish either at our either you go out to get it or that you're if your mother still uh, makes, you know, makes food. Uh -huh. uh, what is your go-to dream dish to, to have uh, when you come back from, say, Spain? Oh, um, ta tacos, tacos and chilaquiles. Chilaquiles. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, yeah, I need something spicy and, and, and I need something to cure my hangover, which I <laughs> generally have after I come back from a long trip. And um, yeah, and quesadillas, no, that that whole mixture of tortilla sauce or salsa, uh, you know, onions and parsley and you know, chicken and eggs and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, 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 quesadillas, I I, I love it. And my mom is, uh, she's a great Lebanese cook. I'm from, I'm from, she's she's from Lebanon. Oh, oh so okay, she, uh, interesting. Yeah, so she she makes absolutely fantastic Lebanese food. Um, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, Mexican. Mexican. That's a, that's that's really uh, that's got to be a, a fascinating family to, to be from. Then I mean, it, the 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 culture, you know, uh, differences. You know, it's just it's just very interesting. And and of course, the first thing I think of when I think of Middle East and, and Mexico is that's how um, uh, El Pastor kind of came to be. Exactly. Right? Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. You know, and it's like, you know, I, I watch a lot of food shows. I used to be a food writer, so, <laughs> I, you know, but, and I, I there was a great net, speaking of Netflix, uh, because of Narcos, there's a great Netflix series about tacos in, in Mexico uh, that just makes me want to, you know, just fly down there and start. Where, like where, where, are, you, where are you at right now? Uh, outside of Chicago. Oh, uh, Chicago. Well, you have great Mexican oh, food. In there, there definitely is. But I mean, when you see the, when you see the real thing, it's like yeah, no, no, the best tacos in Mexico actually they're they're in Tijuana. Okay, Tijuana, the best one, yeah, 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 best tacos. That's a, that's a little bit easier for most Americans. It's like in and out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I was talking about. If, if you if you ever go to LA or San Diego, you just yeah, yeah, pop down, give me a pop call, down. I'll tell you, I'll tell you where to go. All right, all right, sounds good. That's that's excellent. Um, what what um what's the role you're doing? You said you're. Are you going back to Spain at some point for the, the series that you said yeah, you were shooting? Yeah, it's it's called Now and Then. Okay. Uh, it's for Apple TV. Okay. Uh, and it's a it's a bilingual series. Um, it's a thriller about. Uh, I, I cannot talk about it too much. Right. It's uh, not out yet. No, no, it's not out. We just finished uh, shooting the first season. Okay. It'll probably come out next year. Okay. Uh, and if it does well, I'll I'll, I'll be I'll, I'll be eating a lot of uh, tortas yeah, yeah. and uh, drinking a lot of <laughs> in Spain. Yes. <laughs> um. What um, I guess what can you tell me about now and then? Who who uh, else are you working with or who's? Um, who, yeah, who's I, I could I, we can talk about that. It's uh, uh Marina de Tavira, okay. uh, Mexican actress, amazing. She's a, a Academy Award nominee for Roma. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, uh, Rosie per uh, Rosie Perez. She is oh, also, wow. yeah. Uh, Manolo Cardona, who's a Colombian actor, uh, fantastic guy. He was um, he just had like the number one series in uh, in uh, Netflix, uh, Who Killed Sarah. Oh, okay, uh, I think I saw something about this. Huge, huge su success. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Maribel Verdú. 
to uh, Spanish actress, magnificent. She was in uh, Pan's Labyrinth. And oh wow! Matambien. Um, so it's a oh, very, very interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's a very interesting. Um, I guess the algorithm told Apple that they needed, like you know, from all over Latin America. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and the U.S. So um, I'm very happy with it. We had a lot of fun. I'm I'm eager to to see more about that. Then that's great. So it's now now and then is something that's coming up. Yeah, uh, probably next year. Uh, yeah, for Apple TV. Excellent. Okay. Um, have you, have you tried, uh, have you, have you gotten very far with breaking through to, you know, I, I guess gringo <laughs> cinema, you know, uh, Hollywood stuff? I mean, I noticed one of your credits was Beverly Hills Chihuahua. Yeah. <laughs> I, also, I also shot The Burning Plane, which was a, a very nice, uh, okay. Guillermo Arriaga directed it with, uh, Charlize Theron and Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, I remember that movie now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I went to the US, I went to LA to live a couple of years. Um, but the, the roles that, that were being offered, I, I, I didn't care for them. So I just, yeah. uh, I said, why, why am I going to play like a vampire drug dealer? Right. You well, know, been number or, two. Exactly. <laughs> when I can do like a real, real important work uh, here in Mexico. So I came yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and they, they, I mean, they're, they're, they're been, there's been offers, uh, but, you know, I'm, I'd rather choose what, what I'm going to be uh, happy and proud of doing. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, and there's always the option that something may come along that may spark your interest in. in yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like sometimes the there's, closed. There's, there's been a couple of things, but also, you know, um, since sometimes they 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 just uh, they get mixed up or not mixed up, but uh, you know, if, if you're, you're, timing, you're the timing isn't right. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, but you know, I, I would love it. I would love it. Um, I ha there's no rush, really. Uh, yeah, yeah. Things, it's 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 a different world now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. In the in the nineties when I went to. Or in the in the two thousands when I went to LA, I mean, now they, I mean, they, they, there's so much more work for you know, all kinds of different nationalities and 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 people that um, it's yeah. a lot easier than it was back then. Well, the streamers definitely like Netflix have really opened up things. I mean, the, that that Squid Game thing, you know, is a was a huge. That's a, you know, it's a South Korean mm -hmm. thing. All kinds of you know different you know uh, countries that have you know shows that are reaching out you know it's like things that when i was a kid like you know it was hard pressed to get people to like stuff from england yeah <laughs> it works. they weren't american and nowadays it's like younger people are more accepting of um subtitles or you know if, if necessary if they don't know the language and and as long as it's kind of something new yeah um, they're more accepting of it and, and representation has gotten a lot better Exactly. So, two. So, there aren't, you know, uh, other uh, Latino actors aren't just playing henchman number two all the time. <laughs> exactly. So, and and yeah, and, and it goes like that for you know Asians and uh, you know. Yeah. So uh, it's it's uh yeah it's, it's it's an interesting time. Let's let's see what happens. Yeah. Um, now, with regards to Narcos, what was what's been your your favorite part of playing playing your role? Um, was there a certain uh, episode certain scene certain uh arc i guess that that was like the most interesting for you uh i i, I liked uh, last last season um while, while i was trying to you know this whole like shakespearean thing of betraying like my best friend not right. diego diego's diego's character um i like it when the when the tough guys you know just don't speak and plan. Right. Uh, I enjoy that very much more than yeah. just the you know doing the action scenes. Yeah, and, um, and I liked I I I very much like the you know the, this like existential arc that Amado goes through in the third season, um, because you know I, I don't want to spoil anything, but um, if right. have you seen it? Have you seen everything? No, I haven't seen yeah. anything. Oh, then well, I mean, I'll, I, I'll, I'll be watching it all when it comes. I'll be rewatching uh, when it comes out. Yeah, I'll be rewatching the first two seasons in preparation oh, for the third. Okay, so uh, at the end, I'm not going to say anything, but at the end, um, 
I, I think what you will see in the end of third season really happened. Yeah. That's all I'm going to tell you. Okay. All right. But it's uh, it's very interesting. It's um, Maybe we can have a conversation about it later. Yeah, maybe it when uh, now and then. Uh, now and then, correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My, my short-term memory sometimes isn't that great. Uh, <laughs> maybe when that comes out, we'll be able to re, you know, rehash uh, Narcos 3. But... Um, yeah, the, the the show is just exceptional, and I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing it. And I, I've, you're you're one of those uh, guys on the show that I, I particularly love. And um, Thank you. the the gentleman that plays uh, Pacho, I also like a lot too. Fantastic actor. Yeah, I love him. And, and you guys, I, you know, had a certain you know uh, real, real tight relationship that kind of got stretched a bit, you know, on on their uh season kind of but um what, what's that di- you know how is it how is the dynamic of playing all around you know your timelines are all over the place sometimes with <laughs> with this show you know you've already done some things that have happened but in other things it, they're still happening you know it's great kind of crazy how that works it's kind of crazy fortunately we have a fantastic production team that always tells us you know when we have doubts uh what to what to do because yeah it, it got kind of confusing it was like yeah how am i how am i meeting patro again if you know he's in jail right right um right yeah, yeah. but you know it it, it it works out no and, and yeah yeah but those characters you know he's such a great actor that you know it, it would it would it would have been a mistake not to have him this season yeah right uh well you know jose i really want to thank you very much for taking the time with, with me today uh, i appreciate you you coming on and, and gracing us with your presence. Um, it's been a real treat to talk to you. Uh, just make sure you watch Narcos Mexico. The third and final season begins on Netflix November 5th. Uh, and then be on the lookout for Apple TVs now and then also with Jose. And we'll have all your links up and everything like that. And it'll be fantastic. Great. Thank you so much, Brett. I, I, really, thank you. I, I really enjoyed it, man. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You have a great rest of your day. You too. All right. Bye. Bye. Take care.